This episode puts the card in Takeover Cardiff as we get our final lineup heading into next Saturday. Gentlemen, raise your beverages. It is an NXT party. Welcome everybody to the NXT party for episode number 57 of NXT UK. I'm your host, the Rated R Reviewer, Stefan Osborne, joined as always by the General Jerry Slaughter. Good morning, wrestling fans. And this morning we've got two guests, both named Chris, and I'm bound to screw it up at some point. So mm -hmm. before we have to restart this video, let me just get it out of the way. I am terrible with names. We've got Chris Willis and Chris Mace. The good brother, how are you doing this morning? Well, evening for you, really. Yeah, I'm doing great, man. I'm surprised I got called in at the last minute. Jerry, thanks for the phone call. Well, that's no problem, man. Always better with four than with three. And we've got Chris Mace, The Holiday. How are you doing this morning? Oh, doing good. Nice early morning. Just ready to talk about NXT. So, this week's episode was great at the beginning, but... You, you know if you watch this show, me and Jerry love Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel, so this tag match is going to be amazing. Oh, oh the, the second we saw Silhouettes and Music start, <laughs> like, before he, but the um, announcers you started talking, we're like, yay! <laughs> so Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel come down, serious as always, and then we have The Hunt. We've got Jay Melrose, that's the primate, and the wild boar, Mike Hitchman. You had said like um, it's like it's like Iker looks badass, but look at Bartel, dude. He like, <laughs> pulls off that serious face just like so well. He, he he's like that odd mix of this Wonder Kid Alex Wright, but he's got like the regal scowl down like perfectly. Yeah, and it's, mm -hmm. and it's oh, he remembers the dude, dance. Dude. Hell yeah! <laughs> so, uh, Mister Good Brother. Chris Willis. What did you think about the opening match here? Oh, the opening tag team match? The crowd was red hot. I really enjoy. I like Imperium. I like Bartel. And, um... Eichner. Oh, shit. Shit. Fuck. Eichner. 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 Yeah. Okay, it happens. Fabian. We, we, we all forget the names. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the tag team match was really good. I really enjoyed it. It sucks that the Hunt is on a, another losing streak as a tag team, so that's with, all I can really say. With each match, though, it looked like they're getting more cohesive, though, if anything. Yeah. And they're getting more into character. Yes. Especially the Primate. Oh, yeah. What did you think about the match, Chris Mace? Uh, I thought it was a damn good match. I think it's one of the Hunt's best matches I've seen out of them so far. They, they brought their A game today, but is that their, their ability... In the ring, or is that because they're wrestling Eichner and Bartel that makes any tag team look better than they are? Than they are. That's what I'm curious. Both, That's what I'm curious about. It's, it's not. It's both. not unusual for him to have a bad thought about <clears throat> these teams. So, <laughs> uh, your thoughts, Jerry? Well, I already went into this match rooting for Eichner and Bartel naturally, but I love, I love the Hunt. The Hunt's an awesome team. They're an awesome gimmick. If they sh sold the mask and whatnot, I wouldn't buy one. But I'd see the kids in the crowd wearing them. You know, the kids would be all about the hunt. And, um, like, they'll still give them nightmares as well. But I just like the fact that they're so unorthodox. But at the same time, where they're unorthodox in, like, that weird way, Eichner and Bartel are super unorthodox in brutal fashions, like with their drop kicks, setup moves, and everything else. There's simple brutality that they do. Even like this arm lock that um, Eichner, no, Bartel, I think I had, uh, had on Melrose earlier in the match where you're just stepping on his face. At the same time, like he's stepping on his face. Yeah. He's stepping on his face and he's wrenching his arm. <laughs> yeah, face slash neck. Yeah. 
Like, we got to see all of Eichner and Bartello's greatest hits, save one. They didn't do the launch off the uh, turn the lawn dart into, yeah. uh, into the suplex. But... We got to see everything else, and I, I really enjoyed the uh, the spine buster into the penalty kick. Yeah. This one was very fluid. It, it looked like there wasn't as much setup as normal, but, you know, they just flowed right into the move at the last second. It was great. And just that d double uh, basement drop kick they do, where Eichner's doing it from the apron. He's doing a drive-by while... Uh, Bartels coming off the ropes and doing a, a what a basement drop kick. Well, they, they did a modified version of it too. Like um, Eichner, I think nailed. I want to say it was um, spine buster. A spine buster on Jay Melrose that they was on the um, ring apron, and yeah. then Bartel basement drop kicked them off the apron yeah. to the outside. And sick looking. Coming off of that, we got the uh, European uppercut by Bartel coming off the middle turnbuckle into uh, Eichner having, I guess it was Mike Hitchman. Mike Wal Walborg. Uh, for, uh, for the, it wasn't as much last ride as it normally is. Yeah. But you could tell he still tried to get him up a little bit. Yeah, it was, it was, it was power bomb number three, possibly. Or four. Possibly four. So after this match, we have Sid Scala in the back, and he is announcing one of, I guess, the final matches for NXT TakeOver Cardiff, or NXT UK TakeOver Cardiff. Oh, it's going to be a mouthful again. Yep. So based off of the uh, encounter we had during the match with uh, Kenny Williams last week, uh, Travis Banks is going to get a match with Noam Dar, who was sitting at commentary. Yeah. Because he's guaranteed a match with his signing to NXT UK. To have a match at every takeover. Yeah. At the very least, this one. So, it gets to be with Travis Banks, which we called last week. And I apologize if you watched that episode last week. I kept calling him Kill Kenny Williams there at the end. But I meant Travis Banks. Yeah. They're both losers. So, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but yeah, Noam Dar wants this match because he's already beat Travis Banks. So, he's hoping he goes into his first NXT UK takeover. And is capable of doing it again. Yeah. So he's probably going to go into it with a lot of arrogance. But I foresee Kenny Williams coming out and either costing him the match or helping him win the match. Hey, Chris Wells, do you give two shits about this match? Because I really don't. <laughs> uh, uh, let me see. Oh, 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 wow. This match is really happening? Oh, I, I, this is pretty much a piss break. <laughs> no, real talk. This is really a piss break match. I can just see it now. Like, a do, do we contest, actually see the match ball. happening in general? Oh, man. Okay, yeah, Travis Banks maybe, but Noam Dar. It, what kind of match is Noam Dar capable of ta bringing out of Travis Banks? Hopefully. Because you know it's not going to be all of these fucking kicks. Yeah. He might get a few of them in, but Noam Dar is going to take him to the mat. Unless, mm -hmm. unless Travis Banks gets injured sometime before then, and we get another wrestler again. I know, the, I know the UK crowd is going to be doing that stupid chant. Da 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 What do you think about this, Chris Mace? Yeah. I'm about to say, I like Noam Dar, but like I said, Travis Banks I have no confidence in unless we're going to do another angle where he gets attacked and then he gets replaced with some, uh, some bit, somebody else. Uh, so that's the only thing I think will save this matchup is if he gets attacked and beat down and somebody else takes his spot. Could have said better myself. I hope it's the winner of the match between... Uh, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. We have a match next week and I, and I don't want to uh, spoil it now. But uh, hopefully I'll remember this when we get there. After this, we get Radzi outside of Imperium's locker room. He's trying to get a word with, I guess, Walter. But instead, we've got the returning Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner uh, basically telling him off and going into the locker room. Eichner first, and then you hear a kerfluffle. You hear some something going you on. You hear shenanigans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so Bartel follows him in and then I guess the camera goes in and gets knocked down and then 
You see Eichner laid out and the and Bartelli's color bars. It's like it's all it's all crazy. Once color bars pop up on the screen, that means it's crazy. And so, who attacked Imperium in their locker in their own locker room? <clears throat> That's going to be the question of the night. Uh, after that, we've got Kaylee Ray coming up in a match with Shax. Now. <laughs> my... Oh, oh, oh my gosh, she's the cutest little thing. She comes out in what looks like uh, maybe a Louisiana uh, it's very funeral burlesque. attire. Burlesque, <laughs> but funeral attire. And yeah. she's she's adopted uh, Tony Storm's old tidy hat, only it's black and it's got a black veil. Yeah. And uh, she she's the like cutest the, little thing, though. She looked like, she looked like a dirty little jazz whore. Shax. <laughs> Is possibly the worst name for a female wrestler I have ever heard. Yeah, it is really. It, awful. It, 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 sounds like, it sounds more like a Disney character than anything else. And they're announcing her mm. as though she's like the well, not announcing, but the uh, commentators are saying like she's a new addition to NXT UK, like she's signed. Yeah, but Shax, that's the name they gave her. K. Yes. So. Your thoughts on this match, Chris Mace? Uh, what fucking name did they give this girl? Like I said, she's a cute little thing, but damn, what jack? What the? I don't know. Matt, uh, story of the match is just glory bomb. I was about to call her glory hole, that'd be something really bad, but glory bomb, and that's it. And that's all I remember about the match. Really, it was just pretty much a basic squash match to set up what was going to happen after the match. Well, there was a sweet super kick right before that glory bomb. Yeah. Uh, Jax goes for a, a, that double springboard in the corner where she jumps off the bottom rope onto the middle rope and then turns around. I don't know what she was going for, possibly a cross body, who knows, but she catches a super kick for her efforts. Mm -hmm. And then that's when Kaylee Ray picks her up into the gory bomb. But it was a fairly quick match. Yeah. I don't remember much, if any, offense out of, uh, Jax. She she did throw a couple forearms and whatnot, only for Kaylee Ray. It's like, oh, bitch, no, you didn't. That that that's pretty much what that's pretty much the face she gave her. It's like, are you trying to embarrass me on UK television? What do you think about our women's match of the night, Chris Willis? <laughs> what women's match of the night? Oh my god, I wanted that match, <laughs> and I wanted that match to end like in one minute. That lasted like almost three to four minutes. I'm like Kaylee Ray. Get to the point, girl. You're like, end it. Hurry up. I'm like, I don't care. Thank God she got the victory. And plus, she needs to change that theme song, man. She needs to get rid of that. It, it's not really that great of a theme. It's it's not memorable. I can't think of exactly. I think I think that's what bothers me about it, is the fact that I can't remember how bad her song. Is. Well, I think for a while it's just going to be that way with a lot of wrestlers in this new brand. It it's. That not all themes are going to be like Gallus, where you know who it is at yeah. the very beginning. Oh, yeah. One you're, going of the best to, there. you're going to have to figure it out eventually. That you know, uh, it's it takes a while. That's, true. True. Like think about when you start watching a new promotion and you don't know who anybody's music it is, what anybody's music is. Yeah. So you hear the music come on and like three quarters of the crowd is erupting, and you're like, how do they know? Well, of like the first time Jericho ever appeared on um on television, like they had um his music start up and everything, and all of a sudden you see his name flip out into the screen, and that's when everybody went ape shit. So, mm -hmm. yeah, like it, it it's iconic music, but yeah, I think back to the night that he debuted, and when you first heard the music, you didn't know it was Y two J. No, maybe if you caught. Because sometimes they're careful about it, but you'd catch a sign in the crowd with a smart fan, somebody that knew that oh, Y2J there, there, was there's like, debuting yeah, that night. There are three or four signs I saw, and some people already knew from like the pages and whatnot, for, or the dirt sheets. Because back then we didn't have spoilers, we had like dirt sheets, more or less. Because we didn't have our social media platforms or anything like that at that point. We had the internet, it was just very loud and very annoying. <laughs> so maybe Kaylee's Ra Kaylee Ray's music is not bad per se, it's just going to take a while before we recognize it as her music. Alright, but 
The many stories in Kaylee Ray's music, it's her message afterwards to tell you the story. Yeah, the, the match was just a setup to her being in the ring and getting on the mic afterwards. Mm -hmm. And she proceeds to tear, try to tear down Tony Storm, but then Tony Storm comes out. And uh, I figured this was just going to get physical real quick because Tony Storm doesn't even have a mic, doesn't ask for a mic, doesn't try to take the mic from Kaylee Ray. Kaylee Ray just continues <clears throat> to verbally berate her. And tell her that the reason that she has nobody in her life to go home to is because of herself. Yeah. She has nobody and nothing. Everybody abandons her because of her. Yeah. And uh, and then she tells her that it, her dad abandoned her as just a little kid because of her. Yeah. And that's when she smacks Kaylee Ray. Yeah. And Kaylee Ray quickly gets out of the ring and goes up the rampway. But she's got a smile on her face despite holding her cheek because she knows she's in Tony Storm's head. Yeah. And I think looking back to the setup of this and them talking a lot about Kaylee Ray getting in Tony Storm's head and that's how she's going to win the match, I think this is starting to pay off pretty well here because I really like this. Yeah. It took me a while to get warmed up to this match, but now I'm really looking forward to Tony Storm losing. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm not sure it's going to happen. Yeah. What do you think about all of this, Chris Willis? Um, the promo was great from Kaylee Ray, but when she said the word shiny, shiny, I'm like, ugh, cringe. I hate that word. I hate that word. But when she really hit home on Tony Storm, and you just see Tony Storm's face like, don't you, don't you bring up my daddy. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my and god. Just, like, it was a weak it was a weak slap. I'm sorry. That slap from Tony Storm was this weak sauce. Trust it, me when I say this. Her sad like, brown oh. face. It was it wasn't high as fifty seven on tonight on on this episode, you know it's fifty seven. Like, like, come, on, like, come on girl, you need to hit a little bit harder than that. I know you was looking good in those jeans, but <laughs> come on, Tony. Come on. Yeah, she has a wide butt. So, uh, so, Chris Mace, uh, any comments about Tony Storm's butt, uh, the slap, <laughs> the, the weak ass, that, that frown, that, that sad frown she does way too early because she, she does this super sad frown that's just so fake looking, but it was way before Kaylee Ray really started digging into her and I think it was, it was a little too early for even that. That was just overacting, dramatic, uh, uh -huh. awful. Uh, <laughs> or like, any, anything like else. Like I said, just the promo itself was just, she just run her down, good storytelling, trying to run her down, get in her head, but Tony Storm just get looking like she's already sad and about to cry in the first two seconds she's out there. It was like, okay, and it's getting worse and worse, and it's like, is that resting bitch face? Fucking what the hell is wrong with you? She's just like... And getting worse and looking like a droopy dog, and I'm like, oh, what in the fuck? <laughs> and yeah. then finally, then finally, that slap that was weak as hell, and it's just like, okay, you're building it up. I hope, like I said, I hope Kaylee Ray takes that title because everybody knows I'm not a fan of Tony Storm. She take that shiny, shiny, and shove it up that big ass you got. But her now, I don't care. I don't want to hear hear about Tony Storm too much more. <laughs> I have to be honest. I was okay with the slap. I thought it was just fine. Uh, if it seemed weak, maybe it's because she was so sad. Because where do you go from there? When you start out the, the, the bar bar barrage, yeah. uh, immediately with that super frowny face, where do you go from there? Um, so maybe she's so just like, uh, <laughs> so sad. I, 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 I have no verbal comeback to what you just said. Well, especially since I don't have a mic. I didn't remember the mic. God damn it. No, they sent her out there without a mic on purpose. And when uh, Kaylee Ray said shiny, shiny, I think she was going for it as much sarcastically as she could. She just didn't quite pull it off. Yeah. It was still kind of cringeworthy, but I, I, I feel where she was going. What what I really love about this promo, then we'll move on, I guess, is um, the fact that, you know, you always had those kids, like, in the crowd in the 80s and 90s and whatnot, dressed like Bret Hart or the Legion of Doom or whoever's talking in the ring. You always had those kids dressed up that they always pan out to the crowd, especially on those ones where 
the wrestlers get in a really emotional speech, the kids are crying or cheering him on. You think I'm going back to this one kid just that was so sore. Like pretty much <laughs> just that one kid and I'm like, that's it? She was doing a better job of, of frowning and acting sad than Tony Storm was. Yes, she was. <laughs> but they had to keep cutting to her. So, I think that's why. Coming off of this, we've got a recap of Mastiff versus Coffee. That's Joe Coffee from a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And the match ended in a double countout. And so uh, this is going to lead into a last man standing match at NXT UK TakeOver Cardiff. Way to go. And uh, this is just, you know, a, a video promo as NXT does very well. Mm -hmm. Very well done. And, uh, and it shows they can count to ten. Yeah. Individually uh, I mean, uh, and it, separately. It, and it, together. It, they and may skip numbers, but they edit it together so beautifully that you would not know. So, yeah. Uh, I thought it was fine. Mm -hmm. Builds it up fine for a show that neither one of them are going to be on live. What do you think about it, Chris Mace? Uh, at least the master stopped talking about his daddy issues. That's a good thing. I'm glad they got away from that stuff. Like I said, I'm looking forward to this match. I'm looking forward to them beating the shit out of each other at Cardiff, and let's see how it plays out. But I thought it was really well done. What do you think about it, Chris Willis? I was about to say, they, all, they, they, they covered this match while we were in Toronto. So Yeah, I didn't even watch the match. Yeah. Oh, neither did I. I didn't have to. You guys did a great job with that, by the way. I know, I know we haven't had you on the show since then, and thank you for all your guys' help. And that 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 cold open with you guys was just fucking brilliant. But uh, but yeah, um, you saw the saw the match. So how much more brutal do you actually think they can get with this? Oh man, these two men are gonna go. Bro they're gonna go balls to the walls at uh, NXT uh, UK Cardiff. I can't wait. And that I was really happy that when that match happened on the TV, I was like, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fuck finish, or it's gonna be a countout. And I was very happy it was a countout finish. Yeah, two as weeks opposed ago. to episode th twenty seven, was it? Uh, they episode twenty seven. Well, what that that yeah. episode sounds so familiar. Yeah, that, that that was fucking horrible. <laughs> 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 that was so burning my memory. So, was, so, it that, was it the uh, Travis Banks versus um, Jordan Devlin? Yes, it yeah, was. Yeah, and it was, and it was Chris uh, Mace's yeah, first that. one. But, but, but yeah, anyway, um, yeah, uh, Mastiff and Joe Coffey, last man standing. I can't wait for this. So, you know, I, I can't wait. I like the video package. It was cool. You know, they know how to count to 10, so it is what it is. I, I, the video package is great, so I can't wait for this match. Yeah, this is going to be hard-hitting as fuck. Yes, it is. You looking forward to it? Who you got, uh, Chris? Or you want to wait for the predictions? Yeah. I wait for the predictions. I can't, I can't give up my Here. secrets. You know, because I got a little bet going on with Sydney G. I can't give it away right now. All right, so uh, <laughs> Holiday, what did you think about this video package? Like I got say, I thought it was a pretty good pack, video package, and... Like I said, at least they got over Dave Master's uh, daddy issues, stuff like that. So they can they got rid of that crap out of his uh, storyline, everything. So I'm just looking forward to this match. They're gonna beat shit out of each other in that last man standing match. That's for damn sure. I sometimes think they listen to us. So after this, <laughs> we get a fairly interesting video package because it's a promo for a new debuting wrestler, and he is Jamaican. And his name is Oliver Carter. Oliver Carter. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see him next week. Mm -hmm. Which is weird. He just gets one video package one week before he debuts. Maybe he's just a jobber and they decided to try this. Give him a video package and put it on the episode. Well, prior. even then, the first time I saw James Drake, they had video package and then he wrestled like 30 seconds later. <laughs> <laughs> so technically they're getting better it, yeah it took them nearly 60 episodes but sure mm -hmm. uh any comments on the new debuting jamaican do we know av about him i don't think we do sos i hear you so done oh 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 we're not talking about kofi yeah. uh, no. jerry oh, told sorry. me earlier sorry. kofi okay, was serious. okay I'll, I'll serious um okay let's see what's he what's he's about okay it was just all right. 
Yeah, Jerry uh, told me earlier that, you know, Kofi was the other Jamaican wrestler, if you count, you know, his debut. I think he had it for, what, a year and a half, maybe? Yeah. And then he lost the Jamaican he, accent. He lost the accent, and they were like, he's from West Ghana, African people. It's, a, it's, it's wrestling, man. Yeah. Uh, Chris Mace, your thoughts? I just see what he does. Like I said, I just the first we've heard of anything about him on coming to NXT UK is not really in much build or hype to it. So we'll just wait and see what happens next week. So after this, we get an interview backstage with Jordan Devlin, who's basically complaining, "What's a guy got to do to get on NXT UK Takeover Cardiff?" Yeah. Um, however, he gets approached and interrupted by Kenny Williams, who should be in not as good of a mood. Yeah. Because he just got beat by uh, Travis Banks. Yeah. But somehow he ends up challenging uh, for a match here, and we're going to get this next week. Jordan Devlin versus Kenny Williams. Uh, my favorite part, I hope, that he's de Radzi tries to talk to Devlin afterwards, like, I, 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 I hate you, Radzi. And he just walks away. No. <laughs> it's a very Cartman response, it's like, I hate you, Radzi. This is the match I was referring to earlier where I hope the winner is the person that gets introduced into the match if, and hopefully when, Travis Banks gets injured before TakeOver Cardiff. I'd be happy with all two, uh, both of them being there, being made a four corners match. Ooh, that'd be really cool. But yeah, I'd rather see Jordan... I would not think about that. I would match rather see Jordan... No I'd rather see Jordan Devlin one-on-one -on -one with Noam Dar. Yeah. Well, yeah. that that would be a sick match. That would be an awesome match, dude. Yeah. And I think that would actually solidify maybe a face turn or possibly a tweener turn for Jordan Devlin. I think he could do it. I think you. I think at this to... point, most people are like I am. Like I love to hate him. Oh yeah. It's... As opposed to Tyler Bate, where I hate to love him. Yes. Jordan Devlin deserves a lot better because he had the best win loss record in 2018 in yeah. NXT UK. Now, this segment's not over because after that concludes, the camera kind of goes to the right, and there's Walter and Ale uh, Alexander Wolf uh, yelling about, I guess, Iger and Bartell getting attacked. And <clears throat> does Radzi like, approach them or what? Yeah, he does. Yeah, like he wants to get in their business, and they let him know that it's none of his fucking business. Yep. But at the same time, he's like, uh, Walter calls out Tyler Bate because he assumes that it was Tyler Bate, and I think that's what we're all supposed to assume. Yeah. And uh, they're supposed to have a face-to-face -face for the main event anyway. Yeah. But whatever, he reinforces his call out of Tyler Bate. Your thoughts on this whole segment here, uh, Chris Willis? <clears throat> you know, they're very disappointed because their two mates got attacked by a random or a mystery attacker. So, that's all I can really say. <laughs> Chris Mace. Yeah, like I said, you get, at least they're doing store, good storytelling here so you can see how pissed off Walter was speaking and everything like that and just pretty much getting into... Uh, Getting his face, telling him, like, oh, it's none of your business. Don't worry about anything that's fucking going on right now. Fuck this. And he's ready to, he's ready to get in Tyler Bates' face. And ready, probably was ready to beat the shit out of him, too. But, like I said, as of now, we don't know who had done it yet. So When they become cool for faces to go around and just start taking out people? Because, yeah, I think me and him did this same gimmick, like, a week or two, but, like, for before uh, TakeOver. It's all good when you're just evening the odds. Oh, okay. So in this case, uh, there's a backstage attack, you know, out of nowhere, probably with a chair or something, and Walter assumes that even though two of the members of Imperium have been taken out, he's still got the odds because he's still got Alexander Wolf. Yeah. So he's just looking to single out Tyler Bate in the ring and do some damage 10 days or 11 days or whatever it is before Cardiff. Yeah. Okay. After this, we are on to the main event. Sort of. Kind of. It I, is I, the final I, match I, of the I, card. I, I, I would consider the main event. So we've got Mark Andrews coming out with Flash Morgan Webster, the man with three names. 
yeah. versus James Drake coming out with Zach Gibson. Together they are grizzled young veterans. Soon to be recognized as the most prestigious champions in all of WWE. Yes. <coughs> so, this was an okay match for what well, it was. Like, ba ba basis of the match is Mandrews wins, they get him and Flash Morgan Webster get to be in the, uh, making a triple threat match for the uh, tag belts at Cardiff. So this is the final piece of the puzzle for our Cardiff card. And it fell into place. Yeah, we get to see a lot of your favorite Mark Andrews moves. Um, he hits a, a reverse run, a spike driver, whatever, that was just fucking brutal looking. Yep. But that was that was really cool setup too, because uh, James Drake goes to lift him up, possibly for like a fireman's carry or something, but he just twists in midair, catches him around the head, and spikes him. It's, it's like there's no hesitation to it whatsoever, and it looked great. It's how I think it's how it was supposed to look when um, he tried to hit it on Noam Dar that one time, and that ended the match. So I, I think um, James Drake actually nailed it perfectly. Because that's what James Drake does. He sells perfectly. Yes. Uh, the end of this match comes when uh, Gallus comes out, and by that I say without Joe Coffey. We're talking Mark Coffey and Wolfgang. And they attack Flash Morgan Webster, who's sitting or standing ringside, and this distracts everybody because after they beat him down, they start a verbal conflict with uh, who are we talking about here? Zach Gibson, mm -hmm. <coughs> who's down there in a blue suit, like he's not gonna get physical with anybody. But uh, this distracts James Drake long enough to make the most crucial of mistakes. He breaks the general's rule number one. Yep. What's the general rule number one, Jerry? You never try to vertically suplex Mandrews. Ever. Mm -hmm. Rule number one. It's been it's been that way since God, his first match in that company. So Mark Andrews hits the stun dog millionaire, and I will forever hate the name of that move. But he hits it and then does a fruit roll up for the win. Yep. One, two, three. Seemed like a kind of a quick count, but fuck it, whatever. This is how it was supposed to happen. This was supposed to end up being a triple threat for the NXT UK Tag Team Championships at NXT UK TakeOver Cardiff. You're nailing it. So, let's talk about the match first. Uh, Chris Mace. Thought it was a pretty damn good match to me. Um, I was I was wrong, but I thought I swore I thought it was they were supposed to be wrestling members of Gallus to see if they had beat both members yeah, of Gallus. I was wrong that. for that. So yeah. I thought he was going to be wrestling Wolfgang, but mm -hmm. hey, I, I make mistakes. I'm human. But I'm glad I think this match would have been. I'm glad this match was better than that. I think the one with Wolfgang would have been as good. So, but other than that, like I said, I thought it was a good way to build the story up. Have Gallus come out there and. Now Gallus, who's actually the one that end up screwing themselves up, now they got a triple threat match for the tag title, so. Yeah, where they don't have to be in the decision at all. Yep. Can be laid up on, on ringside. What'd you think about this uh, final match here, Chris Willis? Um, I thought the match was really good between uh, Andrews and uh, Drake. It was a great match. I, I really enjoyed it. I admit on, my, on the review on episode 55, I really did not want Webster and Andrews in this tag team title match. I felt like they really did not have the best tag team record. No, mm -hmm. really don't. They had they more don't. losses. They had more um, less wins and more losses. Yeah. Honestly, I, I didn't like it, but they they pulled it off. You know, I really wanted James Drake to win this match because those two don't deserve to be at the pay per view. It should be the Grizzled Young Veterans versus Gallus. I know. I know. It's a heel versus heel, but I'd rather see that match instead of a triple threat tag team title match. Well, I think anybody should be, like, fine with seeing uh, Mark Andrews on the pay-per-view in yes. some form yes, or fashion. I but I could give a fuck less about Flash Morgan Webster until he yeah. I don't, heel. you know, hands down, I, I just, you know, mm -hmm. it, it is what it is. It, you know, 
distraction. I was so like, Woofy, leave him alone. Leave Zach Gibson alone. Woofy, leave him alone. No. And then Drake went for that, tried to go for that suplex. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's a trap. It's a trap. Oh, you idiot. (laughs) If they were going to add a third team to the match, it should have been Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner. Yeah. Oh my yes, I god. Agree. Oh I agree my. with that one. Yeah. Oh my god. Heel versus heel versus heel. Shut I mean, up and take my money. They've had some losses, but I think they've had more far more wins than they have losses. Mm-hmm. And they've You are absolutely correct. Uh so after this, we are not done necessarily with the main event because we still have the face to face with uh Walter and Tyler Bate. But that doesn't happen as it normally would. Basically, Walter just comes out. And, uh... No. Walter doesn't come out. Oh, Trent Seven comes out yeah, first. through the crowd. So yeah. Trent Seven comes out, and you're like, Oh, Trent Seven was the one who attacked uh, Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner back in the locker room. And he comes out, and he's got a chair, doesn't he? No, he, he's not, he doesn't have anything. He's just put mm-hmm. on to the ring. And he does his little mustache pose. So that's when Walter comes out to attack him and leaves uh, Alexander Wolf in his dust because he ends up coming out to the stage and getting attacked by Tyler Bate, who's got the chair. Yes. Yeah. And he's also wearing the sneakers that we saw in the, like that, like in the final shot before the camera went away mm-hmm. after Bartell got knocked into it. So. Trent Seven is fighting Walter briefly, and then it's Trent Seven and Tyler Bate, and Walter just, he can't keep up, because Tyler Bate does that Peter Pan uh, uh, spring back off the ropes. I don't know what else to call it. He springs off the ropes with his neck, with like the back of his neck, with his arms over the top rope, but his head under it, and it just... Yeah, and then he comes back around and hits a clothesline, which doesn't drop Walter like a clothesline should, given the momentum. Yeah. Walter falls forward after the clo- I'm Okay. Okay. So, but I'm glad he didn't take Walter down with the clothesline necessarily. That would have been a little much. Yeah. Uh, what would you think about all of this, uh, Jerry? Let's go with you first. Uh, or just talk about the um, segment itself, the whole... Like, the whole switcheroo thing. Yeah, um, I mean, Tyler Bate ends up on top. He's holding the title up because he hits... The Tyler, Tiger Driver. Tiger Driver. Tiger Bomb. Yeah. He calls it a Tyler Driver, doesn't he? Tyler oh. Driver, yeah. But it's a Tiger Bomb on Walter, and I'm like, honestly, I didn't think he could hit that. I'm kind of impressed. But at the same time, uh, this was all chaotic and... I still see Walter beating him decisively. Oh, yeah. Easily. Maybe that's a spoiler to our predictions, but this really doesn't make me look... Like, Tyler Bates, yeah, but he came out with a chair. Like, even Trent Seven, who's supposed to be half beat up, yeah, like, didn't come out with a chair. I thought he did. It makes sense that he would. Yeah. But Tyler Bates comes out with a chair to attack him. Fuck. Yeah, well, maybe a cool cane. Shit. He needs to walk around shit. with a cane, I think. They got the odds <laughs> even. That's what I'm saying, though. Like, they took out Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner in the locker room. So the odds are even. So you shouldn't need a fucking chair. But Tyler Bate, the baby face, is coming out with it. So, fuck. I don't know. Uh, final thoughts before we rate this bitch. Chris Mace. Like I said, I'll, I'll, like I said, it was very interesting. I think they should have saved Tyler Bate hitting his finish on Walter till the pay-per-view. To just, uh, you know, leave some suspension of disbelief. But like I said, now you've established he can hit it. So it's like, okay, there's not going to be any big surprises during the match for Cardiff. So, I don't know, like I said, in, in Trent Seven, you know, he talks about the Trent Seven Army. Nobody really cared when he got beat up. But he should have come up there with a chair or something. He should have had some kind of protection. He's the one who got the ass kicked, and he's the one that took the five or six power bombs. He should have come up there with chairs or whatever, something to protect him. So he just come up there just playing with his mustache, like, I'm here, let's go, come on. So, it was all right. Like I said, it was all right. Good brother, your thoughts? Uh, it was good to see Trent Seven coming back. I'm hella early, you know, I'm surprised. But, um... The attack was cool. I was really surprised when uh, Tyler Bate 
hit the Tyler Driver 97 or 98, whatever it's called. Right, right. Um, I was like, he's not going to hit it. 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 Holy shit, he hit it. Oh, my God, he hit it. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Big strong boy. Okay. Well, you're losing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, essentially. <laughs> So that brings us to the end of the main event, and here on the NXT party, we like to rate the main event using good old-fashioned NXT. So, in our uh, weird given five spots of NXT, let's start with Chris Willis. Where do you rate the main event? We're talking the match and the fallout, the aftermatch, yeah. if you will. Shout out to the channel. Okay, cool. Um, Wow, okay. Left field. Surprised I went first. Um... I'm going to go three and three quarters. Chris Mays? I'm going to go three and a half. Jerry? For me, um, I was actually glad we didn't get managers versus um, Wolfgang because we already had that. It was one yeah. of the first matches that we actually had on NXT UK television. And I doubt it gets any better than that. Yeah, that, that, that was actually a pretty good match. Um, because we didn't really know what to expect out Wolfgang. I'd already seen a lot of major stuff back when he was in um, TNA Impact. So, for this match to have gone down between him and James Drake, James Drake makes everybody look good yeah. because he sells well. Even like the um, grit your teeth into the corner, that was really great. But, I know, saw that coming. I called it before yeah, it happened. It, it, it's just a sick looking drop kick. It's just wonderful. But the the whole set for the match is great. It's setting up hopefully to, to you know be where I want it to be for the tag team scene. In, in there we go. Go ahead. Do you want me to go ahead and do it? Go ahead. So I was going to say it for predictions. Well, go ahead and do it now. You can do it then too. All right. I want. Flash Morgan Webster and Mandrews to win this match. Uh, but tell them why. Because this will set up for Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel to take the belt off of them. And, mm. Imp- and Imperium will have the gold. So, it's, it's a very terrible outcome for Cardiff. But if they are very brief transitional champions and Eichner and Bartel get the titles off of them... I'm okay with because, that. Because if I remember correctly, they actually ended up getting the better of Eichner and Bartel, and that's one of the things that kind of sent them on a losing streak before Imperium came together. So, I'm loving this idea, and the reason Eichner and Bartel are even together is because of Majors and Flash Morgan Webster. So this all makes sense to me. It'd be a great finality to it. I, I'm down with it. But the whole segment afterwards with Walter and Alexander Wolf coming out and Trent Seven and everything, we saw this coming as well. I didn't see Trent Seven. I knew Tyler Bate was involved, naturally. But I didn't see Trent Seven coming out. He played really no factor in it. But I'm just going to go by the match itself. I'm going to go ahead and give it three three quarters. So... I feel like all of this is generous. The match was okay. Uh, it was it was it was good. It was a good match, and the after match was fine but questionable, as I've already stated with the chair and Tyler Bate and why doesn't uh, fuck it? It's I'm, like it's like why didn't this happen at the end of next week? Yeah, this uh, no no. I'm glad this didn't happen next week. This would have been a terrible go home show for NXT UK Takeover Cardiff. Well, I mean, for at least that final segment, like with him standing over. Um, nah, Walter. I wasn't impressed really by any of that. I'm gonna go three and a quarter spots of NXT. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was good, and I'm not gonna give anything extra coming off of a great show. Well, basically, really the basically you're the more or less rating the, the match because you really give a shit less about the aftermatch. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna go three and a quarter. Yeah. Support no DQ. And that brings us to the end of this episode of the NXT Party. Thank you guys for being on the good brother, Chris Willis, the holiday Chris Mace. And uh, Holiday, where can we find you on social media? Uh, You can find me on Twitter at Christopher Mace. 
Uh, also, just want to say it's for 205 Live and Noah Foster. Uh, he does great work with his show, the 205 Live Matters, and all the other shows he does with Ring of Honor and New Japan and everything else. So follow him. Support Noah his Foster, channel and support 210. Colin Andrews with the chopping block. Colin Space uh, Andrews. He does. Oof. And like I said, other than, and support Cindy Jane, just support James and Owen, support everybody that works hard for the NXT team and NoDQ.com. So that's simply underscore C underscore OK. This is all YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. And uh, for James, that's Weymouth Youth Wrestling. Weymouth spelled W-E-Y-M-O-U-T-H Youth Wrestling. That's his uh, creator wrestler. They, they're really good. Like, they're long. Yeah. But they put a lot of effort into that, and it's really well done. So if you like, uh, like, wrestling video game type uh, C-A-W, like, yeah. That's some serious shit. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, let's see. Owen Finch is uh, Fortune 44, Wrestling Fortune 44, I believe. Yeah. Support. Support. No DQ. So, Chris Willis, where can we find you? Uh, follow me on Facebook, Christopher Willis. Follow me on Instagram, Chris J. Willis 86. Follow me on Twitter, GB Chris Willis 86. Follow my AEW Nations group on Facebook. We just hit, I uh, know, we, we're almost there to 14,000 members oh on the Facebook group. God. Yeah, we're almost there. Um, please support Sydney G on her little recovery. She's doing a lot better. I'm about to be hanging out with her this Saturday at the New Japan uh, show for the Super J Cup tournament. So, you know, you'll see me in Sydney, say hi to us, you know, take a picture. Hey, you know, hey, you know, maybe an autograph. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> I won't have anybody lemons or nothing with my face on like this. But, you know. <laughs> 8 by 10 glossy for me. <laughs> okay, well, thank you guys for being on the show. And if you would like to be on a future episode of the NXT Party, come have a spot of NXT with us. Help us review a future episode of NXT UK. You can find me on Twitter, go to nodq.com forward slash Stefan, that's S-T-E-F-A-N. Or if you just want to look me up on Twitter, it's at Stefan R. Osborne, O-S-B-O-R-N-E. As always, the R stands for restricted. And I say that with a purpose. Mm -hmm. I drop a lot of fuck bombs. A lot of F-bombs. Yeah, you can also find the gentleman on Twitter. At nodq0, and also my Facebook group, Armbar. All capital, A-R-M-B-A-R. Exclamation point. We try and pause there for the lag, but we haven't quite gotten it yet. I, I don't care. It's still using Sky my ears every time. Cause everybody goes to be a little different. He goes with progressive. He goes with the Isley Brothers. I'm not even sure what the hell you. Hey, go I with. was the originator of that. And um, <laughs> Colin Andrew. We used to just say exclamation point. Yes. <laughs> and then Colin Andrew came in with the art. Yep. Oh, that was brilliant. It was great stuff. But memes, discussions, right now and then we'll have like a Tornado Tag Tuesday or Tornado Tag Thursday. And those are always fun when people actually do what the fuck I tell them to do. <laughs> you can also find me on Instagram at Osborne.Stefan. Uh, help me get as many followers as I can with absolutely no content. <laughs> I have a profile pic and a name, and that's just about it. Um, but it'd be really cool to get a ton of followers and never do anything. Just for shits and giggles. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, if you don't have Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or any of that bullshit, leave a comment down below with your email address, and we will get you on the show like we did with Chris Mace here, mm -hmm. who got a yep. Twitter because, you know, he does our show. Yeah. He needs something to plug. I, the only reason I got a Twitter is he keeps <coughs> on telling me he has fucking Twitter. Yeah, and he has followers now. Yeah. And they I excite him. I, I, I get that. So if you like our video, do us a favor, click the like button. And if you like all of our videos, do yourself a favor and click the subscribe button that's over there underneath Jerry. And uh, subscribe to nodq.com. And if you are already subscribed, click that bell icon because we, over on After Match Wrestling, all one word, A F T E R M A T C H, After Match Wrestling. wrestling. We have hit 100 subscribers again, but I think we will stay there this time. Yeah, that means that we are going to start doing What's NXT? That's our NXT review show that we did yesterday. 
uh, I guess starting next week, we're going to do it live on No DQ's YouTube channel. And oh my gosh, it's going to be such a great episode to do live. <laughs> yeah, that way you guys can ask us questions and we will answer them at the end of the video. Uh, this way we get new guests and they don't have to be on the big screen. Oh, okay, can we talk about this episode we get to do live? Um, Keith Lee versus Dijakovic uh, and Street Profits versus Red Dragon. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Live! And uh, we might have a live guest. Mm, stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. But uh, otherwise, yeah, if you leave an email, we'll get back to you. And uh, find us on Aftermatch and subscribe there. And I would say share because, you know, share us with your friends on Twitter, YouTube, so, Facebook. It's the summer of Coke. They had me sharing a bottle. You might as well share us too. Yeah, if we hit a thousand subscribers, we can start going live on Aftermatch. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately, right now, the benefit of Aftermatch is that you get, well, at this point, the NXT party first and then HD. Somehow, I'm going to have to figure out how to get it from nodq.com to Aftermatch after the fact. But yeah, we're going we'll live on We'll figure it all out. Or the boss man will show us. Yeah, we'll have to figure something out. Uh, also, State of NXT is, we are going to continue to do what's NXT. Um, if Aaron does uh, recaps, that's for people to watch him on, do the recap. Uh, on RBQ.com. Yeah, that's fine. It's kind of like predictions, where everybody does some. Yeah. In this case, you know, we're not going to stop doing the NXT review. He, he'll we, know what's going on now. We know everything that led up to now. Well, yeah, well, the thing is, we started doing the review because nobody was, and just because Aaron's starting to do it doesn't mean we should stop, and the fact that he might stop doing it after two weeks yeah, altogether means we need to keep doing it. Oh, yeah. I'm down. So we should still do it for those two weeks as well, I think. Oh, Even yeah. if it is live, so we'll go live before he goes live. Who knows? In between his AEW review and his NXT review, we'll go live in the morning with our NXT review. Yep. So there you go. Uh, that is the state of what's NXT. We are going to continue to do it. It's just what we do. And we are going to continue to do the with NXT us. party. You're stuck. We actually have some plans <laughs> for what's NXT. Like, as, uh, just, we'll let yeah, you know. Yeah, you, 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 you're going to You'll be have to be more. there. Tune in next week. See what happens. Mm -hmm. Uh, so anyway, I think that's all the plugs, and I've rambled for long enough. Quite a bit. For the holiday Chris Mace, for the good brother Chris Willis, for the general Jerry Slaughter, I am the wizard of no DQ, Stefan Osborne. Thank you for having a spot of NXT with us, and we will see you in NXT time. Have a good morning, y'all. Cheerio, mates! <laughs>